Okay, back with 1550, um, and today we're going to talk about Orphan Lambs. Thanks to Menko Pro Genetics for support and putting uh, these 50 blogs, blogs together in, in, over the next 50 days. We're, we're, we're coming towards the end of it, and I've been asked a question about Orphan Lambs, specifically about treatments, but just to cover ARF, and I've tried to cover topics that people have asked me to, and I've one more left I think to do before the end of the 50 uh, that, that I've been asked to do. So, if I look at ARF, it's a virus that affects it. It can go through a flock quite quickly, and typically flocks will get it year to year. There's reasons for it. So what are the symptoms of it? Uh, in young lambs, it affects around the mouth uh, and p uh, mouse and face, but particularly this mucocutaneous junction here, this kind of special layer of skin where the lips and mouth uh, meet the outside skin of the muzzle, um, and it can be quite, you know, it can quite, quite a lot of proliferation. We also get in the coronary band, similar tissue type there. And when you, lambs are, are with, with the mouth infection or the virus are biting on yos, particularly feeding on yos, and if they're, 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 they have cuts, you can get a very nasty mastitis in yos where ARF is present in a flock. Um, so what the virus does, it gets into the skin tissue and causes proliferation of it, and it can last for two to four weeks. And ship, typically when it runs through a flock, it can last eight to 12 weeks. But So it causes proliferation, and I suppose, um, how does it survive year to year? When you see these scabs and proliferation, granulomatous tissue on lambs' uh, mouths, the, those dry, dead scabs, when they fall off, uh, they can have the virus in them for months. And that's probably how it survives year to year in flocks. Um, we also can have carrier sheep, which have no symptoms of our virus, but can carry it. And that's where it probably a, a, a risk of introduction into your flocks. We're always talking about closed flocks from so many diseases, uh, but that can be a risk. Why do pet lambs get more of it? Typically because they're feeding on feeders. They're going to the one spot and if it gets in, um, particularly if they're on milk replacer, they're not as, they might immunologically, uh, pet lambs tend to be, because um, at the start they got in life, more prone to disease in general. But it's really a hygiene thing that if they're sharing teat feeders, um, they'll spread it much more rapidly. Um, in older lambs then, we will see what we call a strawberry foot rot. Uh, strawberry foot, which is basically uh, arf in the feet of the coronary band. Again, quite proliferous, bulbous, uh, uh, reddening, uh, like, like almost like tumour tissue on the feet uh, around the coronary band. Very hard to treat, very hard to get right. And I suppose the big thing with ARF is there's a couple of things. It's zoonosis, it can transfer to humans. We need to be very careful when you're handling uh, lambs or yos with ARF. Just be mindful of gloves. Um, and the other thing that complicates ARF and will affect treatment is when you have the virus replicating and breaking that tissue up and causing proliferation, it is the perfect medium for bacterial uh, growth. So you get secondary infections. And with our skin infections in lambs, particularly Staphylococcus aureus, which is a bacteria that can be on the skin, can proliferate and cause really nasty infections. And that's when we get into real trouble with ARF. Um, dermatophilus is another, congolensis is another uh, uh, back to pathogen that can affect the strawberry foot rot. So, where you have the breaking of the, uh, the around the coronary band of the virus, if you get that pathogen in there as well, you get the really nasty strawberry foots. Um, so, why would I suppose why are the risk factors for 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 this in the first place? If VARF is in a her, in a flock, typically if you get damage, if if they're going on to stubbly, tissue fields like lambs, and you get damage to the mucocutaneous junction, you get breaking of skin. That's when the virus can proliferate. Again, when lambs go on to stubble uh, later on in uh, the season, potentially again that stubble doing damage to around the coronary band, we can see issues with ARF and strawberry foot rot, uh, strawberry foot. Um, so that's that's I suppose the background to ARF. Um, where where it comes from is, is is carrier sheep. I suppose a lot of flocks who are familiar with ARF would be using the ARF vaccine, uh, scabby vax. Um, and I would only suggest it in an infected flock as a part of a control program. It needs to be given six weeks before you'd expect symptoms. Now, I'd never use um, this vaccine or suggest it in the middle of an outbreak. Um, it is a live vaccine, and that's a challenge with it. Um, if you be careful with yourself, you have to apply it. Uh, typically, will go under the, 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 the back of the leg. Uh, and you're scarifying the skin to cause that reaction. Uh, and just be, you know, be mindful of just yourself when you're using it. It, it works well in, uh, as a control mechanism for flocks. When you're talking about this question, of course, well, most of my questions come about on treatments, but um, treatment for, for, for ARF, because it's viral, and I've tried lots of different ones, um, there's very few. If it can run its course for two to four weeks um, and you, you avoid secondary infections, then I think a lot of lambs will, will get over ARF. And then we look at vaccines and control strategies 
to reduce it in the flock. Antibiotics play a key role though because most of these arts, in my experience, get secondary bacterial infections. And we've got to look at, um, so when I talk about the white drugs, the penicillins, but long-acting amoxicillins work really well as a covering antibiotic for a period of time to get that infection under control. I tried a lot of the antiviral arf sprays, can't say positives or negatives. I think a lot of them, these viral things come right on their own. There is talk about lev levamazole being used as well um, with reports that it, it, as immune modulating that it helps. But I think the key thing for me and what I went back to on, on ARF is just and talk to your vet about a, a, an appropriate antibiotic for a period of time to control infections. Look at vaccination in your flock and then control, I suppose, really the vaccine and be aware of this carriers that it's surviving in your flock. And hygiene particularly, if we're thinking about where it might be picking it up around housing time um, and real deep clean of lambing facilities uh, in between lambing seasons. Okay, so that's our nasty disease, cause a lot of issues in flocks. Uh, it's, you know, it's a worldwide problem, it is a virus, and with viruses, we sometimes have to let them run their course. Vaccine here has a role to play. Be careful that you talk to your vet about the proper use and timing on that one. And be, be warned that ARF is a zoonosis, so great care taken when you have ARF in your flock. Um, thought for today, uh, these might seem bizarre, particularly when they're uh, mixed up with some of the topics, but getting outside your comfort zone, my thought for today, something I've done a lot of, uh, it's not an easy place to go to, um, and you know, but if you do, it can be really, it, pushing yourself a little bit to go outside your comfort zone allows us to grow. Challenge yourself with new thinking, new ideas, new ways of doing things, stretch yourself a little bit. I've had to do that over my career, particularly when I started doing videos and blogs and all that sort of thing. It didn't come natural to me for a long time, and I'm always trying to work on getting it better, but it's been very rewarding, and I, and I just think it's a real tip and a thought for today to push yourself occasionally outside your comfort zone. That's it for today. Happy safe farming. Thank you.